the Kraken go into DC against Alexander Ovechkin and with another great performance come away with their eighth in a row. What's cracking everybody and welcome back to Kraken r, r for the eighth consecutive Kraken win as they win four to one against the Capitals and just keep rolling as this road trip and 2024 gets started. And of course now this eighth win in a row also tying the franchise record eight win streak that they set at this same time last year at the start of 2023. So I mean I don't know what the Kraken have been doing for their New Year's resolutions but whatever it is they clearly like starting out New Year's the right way. Oh and yes of course also with the win they do increase that point streak now to a cool dozen 10-0-2 in those last 12. And so with that as well as no changes in this Kraken lineup from the game in Buffalo which doesn't mean no Riker Evans but it's hard to complain with how the team is playing right now we might as well just jump right into the game where kind of also like the game in Buffalo in spite of how the game ends it does not get off to the best start as the Kraken once again for that second game in a row come out a bit flat-footed and honestly are lucky to get to the 10 minute mark without being down a goal or two and of course as for why the Kraken are not playing from behind by at least a goal if not more by the time they get their first shot on goal somewhere around the eight minute mark well that would be the same reason that it's been since pretty much the start of December Joey Decord and once again just like in that game against the Sabres and plenty others before that at least when he had to Decord in this one came up with a few pretty big saves among those ones that he made here early on in the first but none bigger maybe even this season than the one he makes just about seven and a half minutes in as Schultz fans on a breakout pass right in the middle of the Kraken end of the ice and then as he's trying to recover from that in the slot has the puck poked off of his stick right down to another Capitals player who is now all alone in front of the net and in front of Decord he has all the time in the world to handle the puck around backhand forehand and then tries to wrap it around Decord into the side of the net but Decord is able to throw his body to the ice, kick his foot out behind him, and get it to the post just in time to come up with a huge pad save. But it's not that save that I'm talking about. It's the one that he comes up right after this as now the problem is the puck bounces off of his pad right back to that same guy who is still all alone and now has Decord down and out on his stomach right in the crease. So all he has to do now is lift the puck over Decord's pad and put it into what is still pretty much an empty net other than the bottom foot or so that's occupied by Decord's pad. And sure enough, he's able to do just that as he collects the puck off the rebound and then throws it right at the top of the net, still without a Kraken player back to help out Decord. But Decord kicks up his foot and what? What? I'm sorry, what? Joey Decord from his stomach is able to kick his foot up in the air and make the incredible save of the year candidate save to keep this puck out of the net for a second time in the matter of less than a second. It's easily the best save he's had this year and for that matter a cracking goaltender and certainly one of the best we've seen in the NHL so far this season. There's another one somewhat like this that I think Jonathan Quick had just a couple weeks ago but for Decord an absolutely spectacular spectacular save that even Dwayne The Rock Johnson would be proud of or at least if he wasn't proud of it he would be threatened that Decord is coming after his kingdom and I don't think that anybody in Kraken Nation could believe what they just saw that Decord actually made especially the second save but both of these two saves and even at that I don't know that there's anybody other than I suppose Grubauer that can appreciate the difficulty of what Decord just did quite like Chris Drieger sitting on the bench and his reaction to it says it all as he makes eye contact with the cord after the save and I'm no lip reader but had something like this to say sheesh well probably not exactly that but along those lines anyway and so thanks to that absolutely insane sequence from Decord as Schultz starts to think about where he's going to take Decord for dinner after the game for bailing him out here the Kraken now having somehow survived all of this pressure by the Caps still with the game scoreless finally get some pressure back the other way I mean they had a couple of chances here and there but the Capitals had done a pretty good job of not allowing anything to the net a couple of blocks and the Kraken missing the net on a couple of occasions but finally as we approach the nine minute mark and McCann enters the offensive zone with the puck this time the Kraken are able to get a shot off on goal as McCann drops that for Cartier following him in Cartier winds up and fires off a wrist shot that beats Kemper into the back of the net and gives the Kraken the one to nothing lead his seventh of the season and the Kraken with just two shots on goal credit to them at this point have the lead even though they've been massively outplayed now almost halfway through the first period yeah once again for the Kraken somehow after everything that's happened here nine minutes into the game they have the one to nothing lead 
And that just goes back to what I've pointed out with this change for the Kraken from that eight game losing streak and really the start of the season as a whole to now this 12 game point streak. The fact that somehow the Kraken have found ways to win games rather than finding ways to lose games, which was kind of the story of the team up to the end of that eight game losing streak. And certainly part of that ability of theirs to find ways to win games here over this last stretch has been thanks to their ability to build off a of momentum when they get it going their way. Though, in this case, it does require one more fantastic save from Decord. I mean, honestly, at this point, I'm just gonna have to go to a thesaurus to come up with more adjectives for these incredible Decord saves. But just a couple minutes after the Kraken take a lead, it's TJ Oshi, Everett native, that wraps around the net and almost catches Decord. But Decord's able to go from one post to the other, diving his foot across the crease to get it to that post just in time to rob Oshi of the goal here. And then after that Decord save, the Kraken finally start to get that consistent offensive momentum and pressure down towards the other end of the ice for the remaining five or six minutes of this period. And eventually it's actually a rush chance in that offensive pressure the Kraken get caused by a turnover around the Kraken blue line by Tanev and then poke into the neutral zone that releases Wemberg on not quite a breakaway. There's still a defenseman between him and the net, but he's able to use that defenseman as he gets into the offensive end and spends a little bit of time looking around to see if he has a pass, which he realizes he doesn't. With no pass, he uses the defenseman as a screen, drags the puck behind him, and then fires off the wrist shot, which because of that screen gets past Kemper and into the net for Wemberg's seventh of the season and the second goal for the Kraken as they lead now two to nothing going into the first intermission. And I gotta say, at this point, even though there's two periods left and even after everything we saw early on in the season, even the number of games in a row that the Kraken blew not just two point leads, but two to nothing leads, I was feeling pretty confident the Kraken were going to win this game now that they had more than one goal on the board with how Decord has been playing, not just in general, but the saves he's already made in this game. And sure enough, since you've seen the final score, it turns out those two goals would be enough, but things did get a little bit nerve wracking as five minutes or a little bit over five minutes into the second period, the Capitals do end up getting onto the board, breaking up another bid at a shutout for Decord. And it's a nice rush play here from the Capitals as Ovechkin carries it in the offensive end. They are three wide coming into the end with Ovechkin on the side that he usually likes to shoot from, though he's passing this time. Then Strom coming down the middle and uh, Pacioretty coming down the far side. And while defensively for the Kraken, Schultz is able to take the shooting lane away from Ovechkin and Dumoulin is all over Strom, so he really doesn't have any kind of shot when the pass gets to him from Ovechkin. But what Strom is able to do is make a nice little touch pass between his legs, keeping that puck going on the pass from Ovechkin to the far side, where on the odd man three on two rush, Pacioretty is all alone. He collects that puck and fires off a quick shot that Decord does get a piece of, but it squeaks through him and into the net to make it two to one, getting the caps on the board. The good news though is that for the Kraken, this really would be the last good offensive opportunity the caps would get until midway through the third period. As the Kraken pretty much dominate the rest of this second period, certainly when it comes to possession and offensive opportunities, which is a good thing because at the time of this goal, the shots were eight to 17 in the Capitals favor, but the Kraken consistently get that offensive momentum, shots off on goal and are able to even up those shots on goal by the last few minutes of this second period. Though even with all of that going well for the Kraken, as we get into the final two minutes of the second period, they still have yet to solve Kemper for a third time and get back that multi-goal lead. But as we get into those final two minutes, just like in the first period, once again, the Kraken with, well, this time not off a rush chance, it's actually sustained offensive pressure. It's Schultz diving down into the play along the boards as he gets down towards the goal line and then fires a puck at the net. I think looking for a tip from Gord or maybe just a pass to Gord as Gord is in the crease creating chaos in front of the net. There's nothing there. He's defended pretty well, but the rebound does come off of Kemper right out to the side of the net where Schultz goes right around Ovechkin, gets to it first and just shoves it into the net right over the pad of Kemper, giving the crack in the three to nothing lead. And for Schultz, I mean, he hadn't given up a goal at this point, but certainly making up for nearly giving up a goal way back in the first period. So for Schultz, it's his fourth of the season to match the number on the back of his jersey. Tolvanen picks up the primary assist with a quick little pass back and forth as Schultz was going down the boards, passing it to Tolvanen at the faceoff circle and Tolvanen right back. And Bjorkstrand, the secondary assist, having touched the puck at some point before all of that takes place. And now, once again with a multi-goal lead going into the third period, it certainly does feel even better than the 2-0 lead going into the second. 
not only because of how Decord has continued to play and the Kraken starting to sure things up defensively, but also because the Kraken have, even with the struggles early on this season, been very good at at least coming out with points, if not usually wins, when going into a third period with a lead, as has been mentioned a number of times before. And sure enough, there was good reason to feel optimistic going into this third period, as the Kraken don't even allow the Capitals to get a shot on goal until eventually, nine minutes into the period, they get a power play, and on that power play, they do get their first shot on goal of the period. They do almost score towards the end of the power play, but fortunately, that chance, which they did, I think, have to court beat here, was forked wide of the net, so... I guess you'd get a little bit of luck with all of the good play, Decord creating his luck and certainly earning some good luck with the fantastic saves he has, but, you know, fair to point it out when it's still there. Either way, the Kraken survived that power play. The penalty kill continues to play well for them here over this stretch on top of everything else that's been going well. And then a little bit later, after the Kraken have a power play that really only wastes two minutes of clock, the Kraken get their fourth goal on another rush chance set up by Brandon Tanev as he gets the puck from Larson in the neutral zone as they create a breakout chance let loose by Schwartz down in the Kraken end of the ice. And then as he carries into the offensive end, Tanev then rainbows a saucy little pass out in front of Larson who's gotten behind the two defensemen. Larson somehow in stride while going full speed collects that pass, settles it to the ice, then goes backhand forehand and right around Kemper into the back of the net to give the Kraken the 4-1 to lead and ice this game away. There's still, I think, like six minutes left in the game, but the Capitals really don't do much of anything with that time. They never even pull Kemper from the net to the weird dismay of Eddie Olchek on the call. He was really waiting for it. And you know what? I guess I understand why he's upset that they didn't pull Kemper, because it would have given Decord then a chance to hit that empty net, and we're all waiting for that to happen. It's gonna happen at some point in his career, I promise, but yeah. We're eagerly waiting every time that net goes empty at the other end of the ice with Decord in net for the Kraken. Unfortunately, they just never get that chance in part because of this goal from Larson, his third of the season, Tanev's second assist, fourth of the season, and Schwartz also picks up a point in his second game back, a point streak right away as he returns. So then, in the end with this game, it's another very enjoyable, at least from a Kraken fan standpoint anyway, win for the team their 8th straight, tying that franchise record, extending the franchise record 12-point streak, and similar to what we saw last year, the Kraken go on this East Coast road trip to start the new year, and they just cannot lose no matter what they try, and they certainly did try for those first few minutes of this game, but at least when it comes to that, I suppose for what it's worth, if the Kraken didn't get off to that flat-footed, poor start to the game, we never would have gotten to see those incredible saves from Decord, and while it would be nice if he didn't have to make quite so many insane saves, they are very fun to watch when they happen. Now, obviously the game still wasn't perfect, since the one goal did go into the Kraken net, so you'd like to have that back, but it's hard to complain about another multi-goal win, a 4-1 win, as the Kraken, who early on in this stretch were kind of living and dying by the one-goal game. They had six one-goal games in a row, but now have started to win in convincing fashion, which, yeah, definitely helps the heart rate a little bit towards the end of these games. Although, I will say, even with that one goal the Kraken did give up, it was nice to see the team's response to giving up that goal, as again, they pretty much took over the game from there, and didn't give the Caps another good scoring chance until they got onto the power play midway through the third. And I mean, it's called a power play for a reason, so those are gonna happen from time to time. But the Kraken really did respond well to that, and just iced this game away the rest of the time, even with just a one goal lead still early in the second which they built on, obviously. With that, though, let's move on to the Kraken three stars, or at this point, they should probably be better known as the two stars and Joey Decord, or as Christopher said over on Patreon, maybe Joey's just transcended the three stars and we should call them the Joey's at this point, which I would probably be all over if he was Australian, but since he's not, and if I did call them the Joey's, I'd probably have to talk in an Australian accent and nobody wants to hear that, even though, in spite of what I just demonstrated, I did actually have my Australian accent given the thumbs up by Australians, even if they were drunk at Oktoberfest a couple years ago. That's an aside. When it comes to the three stars, which are brought to you by Joey Decord and the Patreons over on Patreon, if you want to help decide these Kraken three stars and you're not Joey Decord, you can help support the channel a little bit more than you already are by watching to this point by going to the link down below to Patreon and supporting over there as well. When it comes to the Kraken three stars, the first star in this game, 
I'm actually going to go with Adam Larson as the first star. I mean, I know Decord had that incredible save and kept the Kraken in it early, but Larson had a fantastic game in his own right. He obviously has that incredible goal displaying his offensive talent, which he really doesn't put on display that often, but it's clearly there as he collects that sauce pass from Tanev, settles it to the ice while full speed at the net, and then is able to look up at the net and make a move on Kemper to get it in past him. So yeah, Larson with that and an assist earlier on in the game. So two points for him, plus a fantastic game defensively. Then the second star, it has to be Joey Decord. I can't put it off too long. Decord, I mean, his game can probably be best summarized with this image. What can I say? Graphic design is my passion. And yes, if you didn't catch it earlier, this is what I was referencing when I mentioned Dwayne The Rock Johnson and his kingdom. It was... Yeah, the Scorpion King with Decord's incredible Scorpion save early on in this one. And then the third star, as again is the case with pretty much every one of these decisive wins the Kraken have been having, it's hard to limit it to just three players and certainly makes this third one a little bit more difficult with plenty of options. But in the end, I am actually going to go with Brandon Tanev for his second game in a row. He picks up two assists, has that very nice pass to let Larson loose on the finish of that breakaway and fantastic goal that he had there, but picked up an assist as well with the nice play turnover and then assist to poke the puck out to Wemberg for Wemberg's goal that gave the Kraken the two to nothing lead, which ends up being the game winning goal, though game winning goals are kind of a dumb stat in my opinion, but that's a whole separate topic for a different time. Either way, Tanev with a second fantastic game in a row, the Gord line continues to be great in their own right, but it's three guys, so I can't really give them a star as a group. Again, it is my star, so I suppose I could, but you know, I'll have at least some rules for these. So yeah, with that, we'll stick with Larson, the first star, Decord, the second, or the Scorpion King, maybe I should say, the second star, and then Tanev, the third. As always, though, I'd love to know your thoughts down in the comment section below, how you feel about this game, the continued winning streak for the Kraken, how we're feeling going into the game against Columbus, which, by the way, I will be streaming for on Saturday, 4 o'clock on Saturday, and I know I'm going to be competing with some playoff NFL, but since the Seahawks aren't in it, and... Well, yeah, the Seahawks are a bit of a sad topic right now anyway with Pete Carroll leaving, but that's, again, lots of asides that I could be going on but not going to do. Anyway, I'm streaming for that game at 4 o'clock starting at 3.45 as far as the stream is concerned on Saturday, so join for that if you can or put it on to the side while you're watching football, whatever the case is. Anyway, if you did make it to this point, thank you very much for watching. If you did like or enjoy the video, there are buttons for that kind of stuff down below to help support the channel. Like and subscribe, of course, I'd appreciate you using them. And until that game against Columbus, as always, stay safe out there, be good to each other, God bless, and go Kraken!